Hello, I'm Alex from Barefaced, and this is an early prototype of our Upsetter 110 AVD guitar cap. And for this video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the other different types of guitar cabs that are out there. So we all know we have closed back cabs and we have open back cabs. That is kind of the guitar world. There is a third sort of guitar cab that isn't that, well, it's pretty uncommon, but there've been quite a few variants of them over the years, and that is the ported guitar cab. Now, sometimes these are referred to as feel cabs. The reason for that is that Thiel and Small, whose first names I've suddenly forgotten, um, they're the two gentlemen who worked out that you could model the behavior of a loudspeaker, which is an electromechanical device, in a cabinet, which is a, is that a mechanical device? Well, it sort of is, it's, you know, it's to do with fluids and compression and, and stuff like that. Anyway, you could model this electromechanical device as an electrical equivalent circuit. So you could then apply standard electrical circuit design theory to it using the equivalent capacitors and inductors and resistors. And this is what they did with Thiel small modeling. It's very satisfying. It's why at some point in the 1970s, speaker cabinets started getting quite a lot better at doing low frequencies because there was much less guesswork. You could actually have parameters to describe what a speaker is like. And I'm not talking about it being 12 inches in diameter or 10 inches in diameter or having a 30 ounce magnet or any of that. I'm talking about MMF. MM, sorry, MMS, which is moving mass of the cone plus associated air load in grams. I'm talking about CMS, which is compliance of the suspension. I'm talking about VAS, which is a sort of volume equivalent thingy-majig. I'm talking about BL, which is the magnetic force multiplied by the amount of wire within that magnetic field. I'm talking about LE, which is inductance, and then you also sort of have semi-inductance. But basically, there are lots of parameters that describe how a speaker really works. SD, which is cone, moving cone area. So that is the one that relates to cone diameter, but it's not directly proportional to cone diameter because, well, a speaker has a nominal diameter, which is roughly the hole it fits in, but then there's the actual bit that moves and radiates um, into the air. So. Thiel and Small came out with a way of modeling the behavior of a speaker at low frequencies. This does not work for high frequencies. It only works once the speaker is being pistonic. And it only works um, accurately when the speaker is behaving linearly. So that's what we call small signal levels. Now, guitar speakers are spectacularly unlinear speakers. So you can't apply TS parameters to a guitar speaker, crank it up and expect it to do what the basic theory says it's going to do, because it won't. So in the design of our AVD cabs, there's been a lot of, right, let's listen to it and see how it sounds, and then let's use some theory. And there's, there's been a big mix of experimental and theoretical design. I mean, that is just what you have to do in the world of guitar, to a, to a lesser degree base, thankfully. Um, but for guitar, oh, it, it's also non-linear. But, so, the Thiel cab that's famously referred to is the design that goes with the EVM 12L speaker, which is, compared to most guitar speakers, much more linear, which is why it works well in a Thiel cab. But a Thiel cab, it's just a ported cab. I think the DIY designs out there or the, the plans out there are normally slot ported, but again, it doesn't matter. It could be a tube port as long as the area matches equivalently and the length once end corrected matches. End correction is to do with the fact that it's not just the air in the port that gets involved, it's the air at the ends of the port that get involved and the shape of the port and what's around it affects that. Um, which is why if you put a slot ported cab on the ground, it will tune with the slot port next to the ground. It will tune slightly lower than if you turn it upside down and have that slot port up in free air because the ground next to it is essentially extending the port slightly. So um, that reminds me of something I've just remembered about on um, port length. 
I'll get back to that. Uh, oh, that's another video. There's, you know, you can make endless videos about this. Um, all this stuff. I mean, that's why this is complicated and why we make really good stuff, because we know about this and we know how to apply it to, to the real world. So, Thiel cabs are ported cabs and there's uh, base reflex cabs. They are, they are designed to basically sound bigger and fatter at low frequencies by virtue of the port producing increased power handling by reducing cone excursion and increase efficiency by adding a, a second radiator and changing the impedance of what's going on, changing the acoustic impedance. Um, but they're going to feel slightly different. They're going to have a different low frequency roll off. And because a speaker cabinet is inherently a high pass filter, that high pass filter, so that's where it rolls off in the lows, um, the shape of that curve mathematically affects the transient response. However, once you're going beyond small signal levels, then the non-linearity of the guitar speaker is going to dominate that. So that's going to matter more than the actual small signal level transient response. So that's ported cabs, that feel cabs, you know, one and the same thing. We then have some other unusual designs. I noticed the Watkins Dominator, which is a um, cab where the speakers face outwards. Well, I think it was a combo, but that's an interesting design where I've got a standard cab. I don't know if it was open or closed back, um, but that's they're trying to help with the dispersion by doing that. Not a bad idea in quite a lot of ways. Um, didn't catch on, I guess. I've not, I've never seen one, but yeah, sort of, sort of. Whilst I was, you know, doing a bit of research into this, I was like, oh, cool old thing. Then, this is something a few e people have emailed me about, Forte cabs. That was a, I believe that company is no more, but it was designed where they put holes in the side of the cab. So if you had a cab like this, they put a hole here, sort of, sort of oval, not, not elliptical, you know, sort of straight sided oval, racetrack shape there. Another one there, and then inside the cab, Actually, not dissimilar to some of the parts of this, they put a sort of angled panel with the idea being that you were sort of guiding the air. And it was interesting when I read the sort of blurb I'd found about this, people are talking about it being like airflow and the air flowing out and the sound flowing out. And I thought, that's not really what happens, is it? I mean, yeah, the mids and highs are going to reflect. Um, so you're going to get some mids and highs coming out of that hole. But then other than that, it's not airflow. We're not blowing air out like it's a a ducted fan, what's actually happening is that that hole, if the rest of the cab is sealed, which it was, is going to act like a port with a fairly minimal port length. Um, so it's going to tune the cab to a certain frequency. I should probably remember not to make videos um, at noon when it's uh, fire alarm testing time. So I'll just wait for that to stop making noises at me and I shall continue. Three, two, one, Stop. It's like working with drummers, isn't it? Come on. There we go. Sorry about that. I'll remember that next time. So the um, that sort of port they were claiming to put on the side, well, that Forte design, which was designed to spread the sound around the room, it's actually kind of a tuned port, a leaky tuned port. I think that's the best way to look at it. Mids and highs are going to leak out of that to a degree in a fairly uncontrolled way. Um, and the port is going to add resonance. So it's a, it's not dissimilar to the AVD cab in the idea that we are having a Helmholtz resonance, you know, a port, a low frequency resonance, um, and we're also trying to let mids and highs out, but it seemed to be designed by someone, I mean, I don't want to be rude about them, I don't know who they are, uh, but it seemed to be designed by someone who'd got an idea but didn't know the science behind it and didn't understand how acoustics works. So. I would not be surprised if a Forte cab works quite a lot better in a lot of situations than a lot of closed back and open back cabs, simply because it's at least had some thought put into the design. But yeah, they, they've not had kind of the expertise to design it to work with how sound actually works. Now another cab I designed, which are still in production, I noticed these are uh, Port City OS Wave cabs, and they are a bit like a hybrid between that Forte cab and your typical slot ported Thiel cabs in that they've taken 
a slot ported cab, so something like this base cab. So this is a Bareface Super Twin, empty. Admire the bracing. That's why they're light but stiff and sound good. So they've got a slot port down the bottom of these cabs and then what they've done in those is they've put a little panel up here as an angled reflector and another panel down here. So what they've got is at low frequencies it's acting as a Helmholtz resonator port, so generating a bit more output like our AVD does. And then the mids and highs, some of them, are bouncing around inside the box. I imagine those angle panels are going to help things sound better because it st stops the box being a, full of cuboid standing waves. Um, and then some of them are going to reflect out through this. Now, that's going to produce some extra output um, in the mids and highs. Issue I see there is that if you're bringing those mids and highs round to the front, what's going to happen, particularly in the lower mid-range frequencies, when your wavelengths are close enough and the phase shift is close enough that they're going to start trying to constructively or destructively interfere with the output from the speakers. You see, with the AVD cabs, we're avoiding that by taking that mid and high output out of the back back again. So taking the mid and high output out of the back and then taking it into being sort of spatial room sound as opposed to so it's becoming non-coherent sound as opposed to trying to bring it round and it has to do this complicated thing of either being constructive or destructive interference which is I feel the risk with that design but I haven't heard one of them. I imagine it does have quite a few pros versus your typical non-designed closed back guitar cab. So I'd be curious to hear any feedback from people who have those. Um, and also, they're, they're the, the guitar, the non-standard guitar cab designs I've come across recently. I mean, there have been loads of guitar cab designs over the years. There was an interesting Trace Elliott one I just remembered, which I think was a 3x12, where it was trying to improve the dispersion, like the Watkins uh, Dominator cab, but instead of it being outwards facing, they got inwards facing and it was I think a 3 by 12 I think it might have been two inwards at the top and then one upwards at the bottom. So they crossfire and actually by crossfiring you actually get more phase coherence than you do when you're outwards firing. So yeah, inwards firing rather than outwards firing to get the cross to get the, the wider dispersion. Um, as we've seen We've been people have been buying guitar cabs for 70 years or so. Um, they have not really changed much. The speakers haven't changed much. I mean, there have been evolutions of speakers and different variants of speakers, but we're still using speakers now that are very similar to those early radiogram speakers that were used. That's what the um, Celestian Blue Alnico is, is based very closely on, which is this sort of Vox sounding speaker. Um, yeah interesting guitar cabs. Let me know about more interesting guitar cabs and let me know if you've used one of these interesting guitar cabs and I'd particularly like to know from anyone who's got one of our AVD cabs and has had a chance to compare it to one of those alternative guitar cabs. It's, it's all very interesting because as much as one can throw science and engineering at this, the science, if you try and scientifically analyse this stuff properly, it gets so, 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 so complicated and difficult to understand that you really should just stop and play your guitar and use your ears because at the end of the day, that is what matters. So that's where I'll stop for now. Play your guitar, use your ears, um, buy our stuff if you want to buy any stuff. But if, if you don't need stuff, don't buy any stuff. You don't have to buy things. You know, I need enough people to buy this stuff that I can make a living and keep my staff employed and, you know, we can do this thing. But for the rest of you, if you've got good stuff, play some music, enjoy it. Um, if you like buying stuff, come and buy some of our stuff. That's cool, but you know, don't, don't feel obliged to, you know, enjoy doing what you're doing. Thank you, goodbye, I've been Alex from Barefaced and I'm turning you off now.